Using integration by parts and the comparison test, prove that the integral between 1 and infinity of sine x over x uh, dx is convergent. So we haven't been asked to find a value on the integral, we just need to show that it converges. Um, just a few little clues. Firstly, look at the limits of the integral. They are um, between 1 and infinity implies that may, and a comparison test often comparison tests uh, lead to the p series so if we can if we can sort of head down that direction when we start to make choices i'm just thinking about the integration by parts just do remember often the comparison test you're looking at p series They're quite friendly it tells us that we need to use integration by parts so that is where we're going to start so I'm just going to ignore the limit because there's enough algebra in it already. I'm just going to actually get an expression for the integral and just ignore the limits for the beginning. So the integral, just treat it as a, an indefinite integral. So the integral of uh, sine x over x with respect to x. So if we want to use integration by parts, we need to rewrite. So we would say, well, that is um, the integral of or sine x times uh, 1 over x dx something like that right so then once you're using integration by parts remember integration by parts it says that the integral of uv dashed equals uv minus the integral of u dashed v right so basically you get to make a decision right at the start uh, what is your u and what is your v dash so you need to decide which one of these do you want to differentiate and which one do you want to integrate so sine x doesn't it's not really much different if we differentiate it it will be cosine x if we integrate it it'll be minus cosine x and so not a lot of change there the one over x is very different if we integrate it we'll get ln x and if we differentiate it, well, we'd probably put it in index form first. We'd say, well, that was uh, x to the power minus 1. And then if we differentiate it, it would be um, minus 1 times x to the power minus 2. So that would be minus 1 over x squared. Now, just going back to what I said earlier, if we're going to use a comparison test, the minus 1 over x squared bit sounds a lot more useful because that is kind of looking like a, it might lead to a convergent p-series. Remember, the p-series is the integral between 1 and infinity of 1 over x to the p. So if we can, if we have p, which is, is greater than 1, then we can show, we can use that to show that things are convergent, assuming all the other conditions are right. So I am going to pick the sine x as the thing I want to integrate. So that's our v dashed. And the 1 over x is the thing I want to differentiate, so that's our u. So let's write them down. So u equals um, 1 over x. u dash to 1 over x is x to the power minus 1. So if we differentiate that, it's going to be minus 1 x to the power minus 2, which is minus 1 over x squared. Uh, v, we'll find in a minute. And v dashed, we've just said, is sine x. So v would be, well, what would differentiate to sine x? Well, uh, it would be minus cosine x, so minus cos x, like that. Right, so that's the by parts bit. So now we can uh, rewrite this. So now this integral equals, well, it's uv which is 1 over x times minus cos x, so that's minus cos x over x, um, minus the integral of u dashed v, so minus the integral of uh, u dashed was minus 1 over x squared, and v is minus cos x, so that's going to end up being positive, and it will be cos x over x squared dx, right? So now I can uh, turn this into, well, I'd actually use the limit. So we've done the by parts bit. So now um, the integral between uh, 1 and infinity of um, sine x over x dx equals the limit as uh, b approaches infinity of well, if we just um, 
We still need to put it in with this UV bit. We still need to evaluate this. It's part of the integral. Um, we need to evaluate it at B and at 1. So it would be minus cos x over x evaluated at 1 and B minus the integral um, of cos x over x squared with respect to x between those same limits of um, 1 and b. So if I take the limit as b approaches infinity of all of that, it's a bit messy, but we don't want to be losing things. Okay, so if we sort this out first, and remember we don't actually need to work these things out numerically, we're just testing for convergence. So we're actually not even testing, we've been told it's convergent, we're showing that it's convergent. Okay, so this bit here equals the limb as x, uh, sorry, as b approaches infinity of, well, this is um, minus cos b over b, minus cos b over b, minus, and that would be minus cos 1 over 1, over 1, right? So that's this bit, and then minus the limb as b approaches infinity of the improper integral, which we will deal with soon, uh, between 1 and b of cos x over x squared over x squared with respect to x. Just if we look at this, so as uh, b approaches infinity, just think that cos b, well, it's it's got a maximum value of 1 and a minimum value of minus 1. So you can see this is just going to approach 0. So minus cos b over b is just going to approach 0. So that whole term is just going to be minus cos 1. So now our integral... Um, equals, well it's just 0 minus cos 1, so it's minus cos 1 minus the limb as b approaches infinity of the integral between b and 1 of cos x over x squared with respect to x. So you can see clearly this converges, we actually know what the value is. So this part of it converges So now we will test this, so we will use, uh, use comparison test on this. And actually we're going to, because remember the comparison test, we want to find a g of x that's greater than or equal to our f of x, and then we want to make sure f of x is greater than or equal to zero. And actually, we're going to make use of another useful piece of information that says that if the integral between infinity and some constant a of the absolute value of f of x with respect to x, if that converges, then the integral of between um, a and infinity of our f of x with respect to x also converges, right? So we're going to use this. Okay, so to make use of this, what we're going to do, we're going to try and build a function that's quite similar to this. But we know that the absolute value of cos x, uh, we know that cos x is bound between 1 and minus 1, but the absolute value of cos x is bound between uh, 1 and 0. Right? So we are interested in um, cos x over x squared. So if we divide all of these by x squared, so uh, 0 over x squared is just 0. Um, remember, x squared is going to be positive, so when we divide, we're not having to flip the inequality or anything like that. So cos x over x, absolute value of cos x over x squared, sorry, less than or equal to 1 over x squared, right? Now, if you think about in terms of this, but it doesn't look quite right, 
if we're taking the absolute value of x and then we're dividing it by x squared, well x squared is positive anyway, so it's not going to affect the absolute value. So we can just write this as um, the absolute value of cos x over x squared, all of it, which is less than or equal to um, the value of 1 over x squared, and it is greater than or equal to 0, right? So now this is our absolute value of f of x. So now we have got an f of x, and we've got a g of x, and we've got a 0. And this situation is true for all, all x that we're interested in. So in that case, it's x greater than or equal to 1. Right? So this situation is true. We're in a position where we can use the comparison test. Right? If you think about this integral on the uh, right, g of x, well, the integral between uh, 1 and infinity of 1 over x squared dx. We know that converges. That is a p-series with p uh, greater than 1. And this is because it is a p-series with p greater than 1. Okay, so that's the first bit. So if this converges, f of x must also converge. So therefore, uh, the integral between 1 and infinity of cos x over x squared, so that's the absolute value with respect to x, also converges, the reason being the comparison test. So if the integral between 1 and and infinity of uh, the absolute value of cos x over x squared dx converges. So it follows that the integral between infinity and 1 or 1 and infinity of cos x over x squared with respect to x, it follows that that also converges, right? That is a rule that you can use. So now we already showed that one part of the original integral converged to minus cos 1. And now we've shown that the rest of the integral converges. So this is enough to show that the integral between 1 and infinity of sine x over x with respect to x converges. It's quite a long way to get there, but we do have conclusive proof.